Hello! If you are curious about how to translate the Sustainable Development Goals into a tool for business, you are in the right place. This is a mini lecture for strategists, entrepreneurs and owners of businesses of any kind and from any industry. We hear that these SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, are trillion dollar market opportunities and that business is just to hop on the bandwagon and figure it out. Well, yes, but how? The trick needed here is to match the true competencies and capabilities of a business with the biggest issues that must be solved in the world. Putting these two together is what it takes for the magic to happen and for SDGs resulting in major new market opportunities for business while significantly improving the state of the world. We call this matching true business sustainability. True business sustainability is all about a fundamental perspective change of business. Rather than the inside out, we need to shift to outside in. And the SDGs are a great opportunity for business to adapt this outside in perspective. Let me explain. Many companies have done so much already in sustainability, yet most have not yet seen the benefits of it. Why not? When we look at how businesses have processed in the past decade and a half, there are those companies that have considered environmental and social issues as risks and opportunities with regards to their existing business primarily, and at best focus on how to reduce the negative impact business generates for the planet and society. We call this inside out, looking at things from the perspective, from inside of the business and looking at the world out there. Some businesses, particularly social enterprises, have adopted an entirely different logic. They started by first looking at what is needed out there in the world and then figuring out what competencies and skills are needed to solve these problems out there. We call this outside in. We differentiate between three different types of sustainability for companies. Business Sustainability 1.0 represents the traditional economical business concern a company has while also looking at environmental and social concerns. This is still done in order to maximize shareholder value and we call these early steps into sustainability a refined shareholder model. Business Sustainability 2.0 actually looks at how to create value for all three dimensions, the economic, the social and the environmental. We call this the so-called triple bottom line perspective. My co-author Thomas Dillick and I believe that true value creation can be much more than just shared value of business and the rest. It goes a step further and requires a perspective shift from the inside out way of looking at the world that is inherent in the two examples I just provided to an outside in perspective. Such a perspective starts by imagining how to create significant positive value in the areas for society, the planet, the economy and global governance. There are numerous serious issues out there in every single country that need the brilliant power of business innovation in order to be solved. Creating such mass positive value requires the best in a company to come out and to play together with the best of what other sectors have to offer. When such core competencies are matched, new solutions emerge. For business this means new services need to be invented, provided and generated, resulting in new markets, new collaborations, new income and new long-term strategies. And hence, this is where the magic happens for everybody. The SDG Compass offers a structured approach to go about creating this magic. In five simple steps, a business goes from first understanding the SDGs, to defining its priorities, setting goals to achieve them, integrating these goals into its operational priorities, and then reporting and communicating on what has been achieved, with these learnings that then serve to start the process once again. I'm going to make this SDG compass work for your business by filling it with a bit of magic. Let us first understand the SDGs as they have been agreed internationally in 2015. There are 17 goals that are defined to lift humanity out of poverty by eliminating hunger, improving childbirth and road mortalities, enforcing education so that no child is left behind, focusing on enabling women in particular, in which enhancing water and sanitation quality play a key role. The economies are transformed through shifting to clean energy and by creating decent work, 
and economic growth where there is still room for growth, using innovation to create new and better infrastructure so that inequalities can be further reduced, particularly in the fast-growing urban areas which need to be transformed into sustainable cities and community. And here comes the challenge of doing all of this while ensuring both sustainable production and consumption so that the urgently needed climate action to maintain the temperature increase within 2 degrees Celsius is feasible. Quite a challenge since our current practices are so threatening both life in our oceans and on our lands. To achieve all of this we need to work on peace and justice, reinforce our institutions and work together in partnerships to achieve all of these goals. These goals set the framework conditions of our global agenda until 2030 and if all of this sounds too much like a bunch of global problems that are either too far from your reality or too big to grasp, then you need further clarity. First of all, you're not alone in needing more clarity. As the 2016 Global Risks Report by the World Economic Forum shows, there are a few more issues that keep CEOs awake at night. These issues are not necessarily appropriately covered in the SDGs. Now, the SDGs were politically negotiated and include only what could be agreed upon, leaving some areas a bit weak and empty. We've noticed in particular some gaps around global governance. An international research team translated the SDGs into issues that are relevant for every single country and can be used as a basis for strategic business solutions anywhere. The framework we came up with is called GapFrame. It took us three conceptual steps to translate the SDGs to national and business relevance. In the first step, we have grouped the 17 SDGs within the four dimensions of sustainability. The environment, called planet here, society, the economy and additionally also governance. In the second step, we had to adapt some of the SDGs to ensure that they are relevant to every single country of the world, independent of its development status, thus from emerging to developing to developed nations. In the third step, we added some issues that are relevant to all countries so that all of us can live well on one planet. In this step, we also decided to split sustainable production and consumption into two separate issues as they are related to very different kinds of business interventions. The emerging 24 issues represent the priorities of our global grand challenges so that stakeholders of all kinds can identify specific action that contribute to a safe space. This idea of a safe space connects to the donut model that Kate Raworth has proposed through Oxfam at the Rio Plus 20 conference. She identified the need for a safe space for humanity, which is framed within the limits of planetary boundaries on one side and the minimum societal foundations on the other. In the gap frame, the safe space is the end goal of a journey towards a world where all of us can live well within the limits of the planet. The unique thing about the gap frame is that this journey is now measurable and hence allows clear action towards it. The safe space is different from an ideal state. We are not looking at achieving an ideal, but a safe space, which can be achieved through a solid improvement in direction of an ideal in every single of the 24 issues identified by the gap frame. We estimate that about 80% of the ideal is good enough to be safe. The gap frame provides a snapshot picture for every single country of the world, indicating the gap between the safe space and where a country currently is. To make it really simple and obvious, we created stamps to highlight this gap. For Switzerland, for example, you see a P for planet in the inner circle which bears the color red, and this means a critical state. This is the priority dimension Switzerland must focus on. The average of all four dimensions is yellow, placing the country on the watch list. The gap frame also provides a score by country which is based on a demanding lowest score method which stands for strong sustainability, in contrast to the normally used average value method reflecting a weak sustainability. 
This is achieved by using the lowest scoring dimension and using that value for the country score. For Switzerland, the value for the planet dimension is 6.2 and thus for the overall gap frame score for Switzerland is also 6.2. For the world, the biggest issue is governance, which has a score of 5.1, thus resu resulting in a gap frame score of 5.1, whilst the stamp shows that the average of all dimensions is also in the critical red state. Much work to be done. When mapping out all countries using the gap frame score, we can see that just about all countries have significant issues to resolve, which currently either represent a threat, dark grey, or are critically endangering our safe space, red. I promised clarity for you on how to use the SDG compass, so by now you understand step one, namely what the SDGs mean for your country. You have a tool to identify what the priority issues are in the countries in which you operate and gapframe.org is freely available for you. The gapframe also allows you to define priorities for your business, the second step of the SDG compass. Let us stay with Switzerland as an example. The gapframe offers a snapshot of the country at one glance. Three of the four dimensions, governance, economy and society, are in the green range of the safe space, while the dimension planet is in the red, dragging down the average to yellow, putting Switzerland on the watch list. Of the 24 issues, eight issues stand out as priorities. The carbon quotient is clearly the biggest issue Switzerland needs to deal with. Really serious are sustainable consumption, biodiversity, equal opportunity, clean energy, oceans and social integration. These are the eight issues where businesses that operate in Switzerland can and must focus on when prioritizing SDG-related activities. The next step in the SDG compass is to set goals. The eight priorities for Switzerland are a good way of comparing the inside-out as compared to the outside-in perspective, which we call the essential ingredient for true business sustainability and which is necessary to unblock the magic that can happen when business solves the grand challenges framed by the SDGs and identified thanks to the gap frame. Outside-in opportunities go far beyond considering sustainability issues as risks and opportunities for your existing business. The food industry in Switzerland sat together with relevant stakeholders and in a few hours unlocked a number of significant long-term business opportunities and entirely new markets simply by adapting the outside-in perspective of true business sustainability. Looking at the difference between the two perspectives in a visual way, we see that the inside-out perspective is about reducing the negative impacts that we generate and protecting our business from the risks that occur while the outside-in perspective is about finding new innovative ways of creating massively positive change by figuring out how to throw the very best of our company at the problem that is there. This is best done in a multi-stakeholder engagement process, such as maybe the collaboratory method, as this needs the kind of new white spot opportunities that can solve our grand challenges while generating the trillion dollars of business opportunities for the business. This is what we are calling the magic. Step four of the SDG compass requires integration of these opportunities into your business. Integrating is about prototyping, adopting, implementing and assessing the positive impact. There are a whole bunch of very interesting challenges and opportunities as we look at these new white space opportunities. We consider new forms of cooperation. We need to look at how to change the rules of the game, inventing new business models. We are looking differently at the role of leadership and culture, and we are considering how to create a new narrative inside the corporation through these prototypes. Reporting and communicating is the fifth and last step of the SDG Compass. To make it meaningful, it is important to figure out how to scale up the solutions that you are innovating. 
using the words of Richard Branson, let's do business like there is a tomorrow, or as Peter Drucker has said, every single social and global issue of our day is truly a business opportunity in disguise. The magic lies in the successful combination of these issues with those competencies that you are most proud of in your business. How can we further help you in creating this magic for your business? We have a couple of executive programs that may be of interest to you. The Impact Leadership Program, the Diploma in Sustainable Business. We have a lot of literature and support material. Feel free to contact us for any support you may need. We have illustrated the five steps of the SDG Compass and hopefully have given you an overview of how you can go about translating the SDGs into major business opportunities. Remember these three things. First, the gap frame is a good way to get started to define your priorities. Second, adopt the outside-in perspective of true business sustainability to ensure that you set the right goals. And third, work with other stakeholders in prototyping new solutions using the collaboratory process or something similar so that you can truly unlock white spot opportunities. The combination of these tools can create that magic that we need so desperately so that all of us can move towards a safe space for all on our planet. Thank you for your interest in translating the SDGs into real action.